In this shot, Henry's just entering the hallway, but immediately in the next shot, he's already out of the hallway. Who's the supernatural character in this game again? Henry's first instinct is to walk over to this gearbox and open it up because... why? His hand phases through this box. The gear spazzes out as he picks it up. The way he picks up this gear is extremely unnatural looking. When I went into this video, I was not expecting it to be about a maintenance worker messing with gears and levers. I didn't sign up for this. Henry's movements are so slow paced and boring. The lever phases through his face. This projector only shines in a tiny circle when it's supposed to shine across that entire screen on the wall. Also, this transition is beyond unnecessary. Also, also, for a projector from the 1930s, this has got to be the most high definition picture I've ever seen. Apparently, they had IMAX projectors back in the 1930s. This bendy on the projector screen quickly speeds up right before the scene changes. Also, the projector reels shoot back extremely fast when they stop. Do you even care? Let's get to smoking, looking. Our machine is finally working. Wait, bendy is real now? When did he come out of the screen? Kind of an important detail to be left out, right? What is Bendy holding on to? And if he's holding on to something off screen, when he goes back off screen, he should be phasing through whatever he's holding on to. Nobody wins in this situation. Or should I say no Bendy wins in this situation. That animation of Bendy swinging isn't very smooth, and it just looks off. Henry must be deaf not to hear a singing cartoon right behind him. Is it just a thing in these music videos for people to be deaf to singing things? Door opens for no reason. Wow, for an unconscious ink machine, it sure has a great sense of dramatic timing. Nothing even triggered the ink machine to be hoisted up. That was really boring. You didn't even see Henry's reaction. You just see the ink machine again, but this time the back of Henry's head too. Bendy just falls through the roof. I gave him a pass earlier for falling into the ink on the floor because that's in the game. But there's no ink puddles on the roof to save you this time, Bendy. Also, the door behind Bendy closed as the camera shot changed. Bendy's tongue looks more like a small set of bottom teeth with no dividing lines. This is the time you should change up the animation style. Bendy seems to wobble back and forth just as Henry would. You could place Bendy's movements onto Henry and it would look exactly the same. Different characters should have different animation styles based on their personalities to further bring their character to life. Just as Ecker Coaster's Scrap Baby and I Can't Fix You, the consistency of their personalities is random. When Too Bad plays, Bendy gets angry suddenly so it can follow the lyrics. Uh, Henry? Normally when someone is scared, there's a flight or fight response, but I'm not seeing either of those. Is Watch Bendy Sing the unknown third response to danger? Bendy has just been standing there singing to Henry, hardly moving for 22 seconds. You're a cartoon, Bendy. Start acting like it. Bendy's eyes here have no reason to look this way. The spotlight appearing is a good example of putting whatever the song is saying on screen, even if it doesn't service the story. Though it is good to keep the visuals relevant to the song, it is even better when the visuals make sense in the context with the story. Also, this spotlight isn't shining on Henry, it's shining down at his feet. Maybe Bendy is trying to use the spotlight to burn off Henry's feet so he can't run away. Wouldn't be very useful considering the fact that Henry isn't moving anywhere anyway. This whole sequence could have used some more creativity with the camera angles. They just used shot reverse shot rather than trying new things, such as split screens or leaving the hallway for a second. Also, that ink looks like fog. Whoa, so many questions here. I think it's time again. Where did the Butcher Gang come from? Were they hiding behind Bendy this whole time trying to avoid the camera? Where did Bendy go? 
Why is he suddenly ink bendy? Why are there only two dudes from the Butcher Gang and not three? The Wrecking Ball dude's head phases through the wall. Welp, I guess the Butcher Gang is completely fine with him not running. They're just gonna stop and wait here until he does something. Maybe they're just sophisticated folk and would rather just sit down and talk things out. Henry actually made an attempt to run. Good job, Widow Henry, you're finally learning. Nah, just kidding. There's still another two minutes of this left. Unnecessary slow motion fall adds nothing. So now the ink is falling down his face. Why didn't it before? Maybe there was no gravity before. And that explains why ink didn't fall and Henry fell in slow motion. Whoa, wait, what? Why are we here now? What happened between the last scene and now? Henry just fell to his death and we're just going to gloss over that and cut to him chatting with Boris? Just like Ecker Coasters Build Our Machine, Boris has no introduction. Boris points up when he says, Projector screen. Is there a projector screen on the roof that I'm just not seeing? This lighting is kind of dull looking. It's kind of a weird brown green color and it looks odd. It lost the previous yellow orange look and has just gone to ugly dark yellow. Henry jerks to the side. Hmm, this scene looks familiar. You've got to run screaming from the demon. Wait, there was a table separating Boris and Henry, and Boris just clips straight through it and gets close to Henry. Also, has Henry made any other face this whole video? He has always looked surprised. You think by now he would have calmed down. This transition effect. There's blue lighting coming from a place that only has orangish light. Oh yeah, almost forgot, this next scene was not set up from the previous. Boris just sang to Henry for a while, and then they took a walk in the Foxy Song Void scene I guess. Why are Henry and Boris illuminated but nothing else is? Henry walks sideways. Why did the characters just get surprised? Was the music too loud for them? Where's this camera shot? Inside a locker or something? If it is, why? It would make sense if the character was hiding in there, but he's not. So it's just pointless, and obscures the view. Why is there bright blue lighting back there when it wasn't there just a second ago? I can't tell what this video is trying to do. Tell its own story or follow the song. On one hand, you have Bendy changing personality to fit the lyrics in a very literal sense. And on the other hand, you have the song build up with a slow paced walk cycle sequence. Why are they covering their eyes like something bright was shining? It was just bendy. To be fair, I guess any bit of light coloration in here would be blinding to them considering how dark this place is. I've been holding it in for a while now, but I have to send this color scheme. It doesn't blend well with the rest of the video. Bendy is also illuminated from no lights. Cardboard bendies appear just because the animator couldn't think of anything else to put here. It took me a while to see that there was ink falling from the ceiling because it's so dark. Also, did I forget to mention that this made no sense? This whole sequence is uneventful. They're just standing there like they're waiting in line at the DMV. Why did Fenry's- <laughs> Fenry. Why did Henry's face blur? Is the camera trying to focus on the black void right now? Also, how is this camera angle ever approved? What am I supposed to say here? The door opens randomly, Ink Bendy is floating and spinning. Nothing else really needs to be said. Back to those unnecessary transitions. Speaking of those transitions, they're copied from Axie. At least when he did them, they fit what was going on in the video. I really don't see why they would be here. This is the I know we've seen how dark this set is, but it's just so extraordinarily dark. I have to send this again. Enchanted Mob is currently watching Spotlight on his phone, and even with the brightness up to 100%, he can't see anything. Ironic, the video called Spotlight almost has no lights. Why does the camera pan down if it just pans back up to the same place it started? Boris's run cycle. Henry, how drunk do you need to be to run straight into this railing? 
Ink Bendy teleports around like Baldi from Baldi's Basics just because the animator didn't want to animate another run cycle. I guess Bendy decided to stop chasing them for a bit. Oh, how convenient. Oh, and now Ink Bendy decides to chase them again. You know, if you went and watched the animation of Ink Bendy running towards them from the side view, you'd see that Ink Bendy just glides over to the elevator. <laughs> Boris and Henry almost stand completely still and looks lazy. Also, why would they be afraid if they're completely secured with an iron gate and are moving down a level? This shot doesn't remind me of anything. Also, the elevator lift system isn't even connected anywhere. It just clips through the elevator. The characters' expressions here are so lifeless. Why just hold on pixelated bendy? The past two shots have added nothing to this video. At this point, each shot seems to serve no purpose other than to reach the end of the song. I just now noticed there are no light sources this entire video. The walls must be lights themselves. Glitching wall. Probably shouldn't have placed the camera here. You can't even see Boris or Henry inside the elevator. Alice just suddenly knows they're coming, I guess. That shot of Alice was way too fast. If you watch the beginning of the video and skip to here, it would be so confusing of how the video would even get here. This is an odd choice for an outro song. Why not just use the instrumental from the video? In conclusion, I don't think this is much of an improvement from Mine Everything. The weakest point is still storytelling. While the sets and assets are well made, the visuals are predictable. The video did not optimize or take advantage of these perfect sets. Andy BTTF's music videos are starting to have a recognizable formula. Bad guy sings to good guy, or the other way around. Main character, or characters, is surprised. They go set to set, singing the lyrics. The way music videos are memorable is determined by their unpredictability, which this video was lacking. The pacing, generally, was too slow. Nearing the end, scenes seem to exist solely to take up time in order to reach the end. Andy BTTF would benefit from spending more time improving his visual storytelling. And if the end is becoming boring, put off the release date until later so it can have a better payoff. The video didn't have a satisfying enough reward for watching it all the way through. If you just spend more time on these, you'll find a great improvement on these aspects. That went right through me. <laughs> I'm gonna get ya! You're just returning those things tonight. I hope it's on the line now. I came in like a rainbow. Gee, it's kinda dark. Pull the lever, crunk. That's it? That was just a bunch of cheap walk cycles! What a rip! <laughs> <laughs>